Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Newcomer's Guide for Grim Dawn. On today's episode, I'll be walking you through the most workhorse class in the game, at least for me, and that's going to be the super edgy, super apocalyptic, super ninja Nightblade. Uh, and I'll apologize right now, I'm super stuffed up in the nose department from being sick. I feel fine other than my stupid voice and my stupid nose, so my apologies if I get sniffly or nasally in this video. Hopefully it'll be done soon and we don't have to deal with this for the entirety of my life. So strap in, comment, like, but definitely subscribe so you can hear all about what it means to be a ninja in the apocalypse. Now first off, your uh, Nightblade class damage types are going to center around cold, piercing, bleeding, and acid damage. There's also small vitality and chaos bits in there too for good measure. And on all th in all fairness, I think I've taken the Nightblade on most of the classes that I play. So, it was the first one that I played when I picked this game up, and it is very, very comfortable for me. Now, our active abilities are pretty cool, in my opinion, with the exception of uh, two of them. There's only two that I think don't really stand out visually, so let's definitely start with those. Phantasmal Blades is our uh, first run-of-the-mill throwing dagger ability, but it does have a pretty gross CD on it, too. It's three seconds. Personally, for a throwing knife button, that seems a little bit too high for me. But the good news is it throws three knives, so one for every second can't be too bad. The ability will use about half your weapon damage while also dealing piercing and bleeding damage. Uh, the more points that you put in, the more knives you're going to throw, up to a maximum of five. And if that CD bothers you as much as it does me, you can pick up the first mastery called Frenetic Throw. And remember, the sad part about this mastery is that we are going to lose a lot of damage, both in total. So your total weapon da or your total damage modified is going to go down, and then the weapon scaling is also going to go down. Once we trade those, however, we're going to get a smaller energy cost, uh, zero cooldown, and we're going to convert the piercing damage over to vitality. So you'll start to see why that could be a good option for you. Heart Seeker is your next option, and it's going to let your knives start to go through the bad guys. The more points you get, the more likely your knives are to pass through the enemies, and to that, uh, we're also going to add on some flat vitality damage. We're going to increase bleeding damage and add some lifesteal to the ability itself, and you can start to pick up the hint of a vitality build with this ability. If you want to go for a signature throwing dagger build, it does exist, and maybe to some people that sounds appealing. As for our last knife mastery, we have Nether Edge. This is going to simply add some crit damage to the knives while also giving some flat cold and chaos damage. The chaos damage feels out of left field, but I'm not going to complain about this ability anymore because that is it. The next ability we have on the list is shorter on mastery options and kind of goofy in the animation department. Uh, Amarasta's Blade Burst is going to deal damage based on your weapon damage up to almost triple at maximum rank while dealing cold and frostburn damage. Uh, this ability also has a chance to freeze when you activate it, but remember it's an AoE ability and it operates on a point and click basis. So you have to find someone, click on them, and then the AoE is going to shoot out from them at the center. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if I could just, like, pull off my nose for the recording of these videos, I would have a much better time. Uh, <sighs> but anyway, Lethal Assault is the uh, first mastery for this ability, and it's going to affect all of your damage while it's active. So, uh, four seconds upon using Blade Burst, you'll get flat acid cold uh, damage, and then you're going to buff your acid cold poison and frostburn damage. So... Pretty handy, all things considered, even if it is a little bit unassuming, but adding all of those damage types to your character, all your other abilities, that sort of stuff is really good. Really good stuff. Now, we start to get to the flashy stuff, though, starting with what I feel like is the signature Nightblade ability. It's called Shadow Strike, and we are going to literally leap through the shadows to deal up to four times our weapon damage. It's also going to do piercing and cold damage of the flat variety, so armored enemies will actually just melt when they get hit by this ability. 
There's also a small stun just to make this ability as attractive as humanly possible. So you're just going to blink and explode people. The first mastery for Shadow Strike does add some flat poison damage while also buffing the same damage type and increasing our crit damage to boot. The real reason I take this mastery though is because it actually reduces the uh, cooldown of Shadow Strike. So it's not necessarily the, the mastery being exactly what I want it to be, but reducing the cooldown of an ability that is that good is never, ever a bad thing. So the more often that we can blink, the happier we'll be. And then the last mastery on the tree is going to do the only thing that Shadow Strike Baseline can't do. Uh, Nightfall is going to let us deal damage in an AoE. <gasps> the AoE is going to deal Cold, Frostburn, Vitality, Decay damage with a small amount of your weapon damage added in as well. Utility-wise, Nightfall has a chance to put enemies to sleep and also gets some big lifesteal. Really, everything along this ability's tree is completely useful and should really be considered if you're opting for Shadow Strike in your build. Now, active ability number four is called Pneumatic Burst. It is going to be your main heal in the build. So this ability has an instant percent heal effect, but it also has a 24 second health regen, total speed, and offensive ability buff. If we grab the first mastery called the Breath of Belgothian, we're actually going to increase the health regen by 40% and reduce the cooldown by half. Only one point needed for all of that stuff. Shadow Dance is the next mastery and it's going to add defensive options to your offensive ones. Mm. Shadow Dance is going to give you some big defensive ability and a percentage chance to dodge both ranged and melee attacks. And then lastly, it's going to reduce entrapment duration. So CC types of those natures will become less uh, difficult to deal with. Oof, my God, I'm sorry, my nose. Oh, we are having a wonderful day today, let me tell you what. Uh, anyway, where were we? Elemental Awakening, the final mastery on the pneumatic burst stream. Uh, it's going to lead you down a bit of a magic route, uh, hence the elemental part. You'll get flat frostburn damage to start, followed by buffing elemental damage, frostburn damage, and giving you some pretty wicked elemental resistance. And I know I've said it before, but I will say it as many times as is necessary. The resistance abilities, or the uh, resistance giving abilities are incredibly, incredibly strong, and they are worth their weight in gold. So next on the Nightblade active set, we have got my personal favorite right off the menu, Ring of Steel. On its face, Ring of Steel is pretty simple, but our AoE is fairly large while doing piercing damage and stunning targets. Uh, and the first mastery for this ability is called Ring of Frost. Just don't tell Jaina that we called it that. Ring of Frost is going to convert our damage to pierce from piercing to cold and also freeze enemies that are hit. Again, that's super simple, but super effective. And if you are playing an Arcanist build with one of my other favorite abilities, which is Flash Freeze, uh, that is a really, 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 really cool combination. <sighs> now, the third uh, mastery for this is called Circle of Slaughter. Uh, this mastery is going to buff piercing damage and flat bleeding damage. So, just to make things even spicier, we're going to tack on some crit damage as well, and a chance to fumble enemy abilities. So it's a workhorse ability. It really is really, really solid option for any Nightblade build. Uh, and if, again, you need a refresher on fumbling, fumbling is just going to silence enemies uh, from using their abilities for a, a duration of time. Blade Barrier is the next active on the list. And while it does not have any masteries, it can't be understated how good this ability is. For all intents and purposes, Blade Barrier will make you completely invincible. And if your build is in need of a panic button, look no further. So while you're invincible, you're getting health regen, you're reducing CC durations, and physical damage retaliation is added on top of those as well. So we can deal a wee bit of damage while we're not moving. And then there is only one other ability in the game that I'd really compare this ability to, and that would be the Mirror of Ariocte's for the Arcanist. So panic away, my friends. It is a really, really good button to have. 
especially if you're going to die in the middle of a million enemies or just one big boss explosion, you know? Well, the final active Nightblade ability is called Blade Trap. And I'll be honest, I slept on this ability for a really long time. Blade Trap has an AoE activation that you throw like a single dagger, and then once it hits something, you'll be doing piercing and bleeding damage while reducing enemy uh, defensive ability. While this is all happening, Blade Trap is actually going to root multiple enemies in place. Mm. With the next mastery, you're going to be able to uh, add a chance for the ability to hit multiple targets with the initial projectile. That might sound a little bit weird, but that just means the initial projectile is going to pass through things, which will inevitably AoE root more people. Well, it, it's also going to put on some flat vitality damage, buffing both our pierce and bleeding damage as well. And after all that, this ability can also steal health from enemies who get hit by it. I apologize if I keep getting caught up in what I'm saying. I have to breathe through my mouth, which is my talking hole, so sometimes it's tough to do both of those things at once. Oh! Whew. Okay, alright. I'm fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. If you could believe it, the Nightblade actually has a single summon, which is not only cool... <coughs> oh, I can't, can't, go, can't go that high. Uh, it is also unkillable. Blade Spirit actually scales off of player bonuses and deals piercing, bleeding, and cold damage, and you can summon two of these bad boys. Even assign some of your devotion skills to them for pretty consistent usage. There are things like, um, well, I can't think of what the ability is at the moment, but uh, basically you assign a devotion to the pet, and every time that the, uh, the Blade Spirit attacks something, uh, it has a, a very good chance to fire off the ability because it attacks in an AoE, and there's two of them, and it's super helpful. Oh. Now that we have got our single summon out of the way, we can move on to the big long list of passives for the Nightblade, which we can probably consider their signature skill line. It's right at the top of their page, but the baseline skill tree for this call... for this... wow, the baseline skill tree for this class is called Dual Blades, and does exactly that. Once you put uh, points into this ability, you get the ability to use two single-handed melee weapons, and with that, you'll also get flat piercing damage. Uh, buffs to both piercing and cold damage. On top of that, you also get some physical resistance, but, uh, you know, take it. I mean, it seems strange that it's there, but take it. It's, it's a resistance. It's totally worth it. Belgothian Shears are the first mastery on the passive tree for dual blades. This is an AoE modifier that operates on a percent chance to be used. The more points that you put in, the higher the chance to get the ability to happen. When it does happen, though, it'll be dealing double weapon damage, adding some flat physical damage, buffed piercing damage, and a stun. So with a little attack speed, this can really get quite spicy with the AoE and the stun. And then the next mastery is going to be Nadala's Hidden Hand. This one is going to be a uh, an acid poison modifier for your autos. Now, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't do the kind of damage I want, but there are some masteries down the line that I want. Well, don't worry. You don't have to have all the previous masteries to choose others down the line. As long as you've got the initial dual blades, you should be able to select anything from this line of mastery. But back to Hidden Hand, though. This one is going to give us some flat acid and poison damage on our autos while also buffing both of them as well. This ability is also able to convert some of our piercing damage to acid while adding a slow. Not sure why we need a slow on a melee ability, but I'm not going to complain because a utility is a utility. Amarasta's Quick Cut is the next down the line, and just like Belgothian's Shears, this one has a chance to be used. Uh, a percent chance to be used, sorry. That might not be clear. When it does get used, though, it'll be doing your weapon damage with some added flat piercing damage and increasing your crit damage to boot. Pretty simple, all things considered, but simple abilities can never really be understated. Whirling Death is the fourth modifier on the path, working the same way that Shears and Quick Cut work. Whirling Death has a percent chance to activate and will attack in a full 360-degree arc. You heard that right, a big old circle all the way around you for slicing people apart. 
That's the best part, but it'll be scaling off your weapon damage while also adding flat bleeding and piercing damage. Very, very big theme for the Nightblade is piercing people and then making them bleed. And that, again, super edgy Ninja Apocalypse. Now on to our very last mastery for the Dual Blades passive ability, but arguably the best one. Execution has a percent chance activation like our previous skills, but more importantly, this mastery is going to deal almost triple weapon damage, add some flat cold damage, and gives you up to 23% health reduction. If you've been keeping track, abilities with the percent health damage are rare, but insanely powerful. The fact that this one can activate off of your autos, which will typically have crazy high attack speed with the Nightblade, means that enemies should be melting off of the face of the planet like some jello left out in the summer sun. Ugh. Now the Nightblade isn't just about modifying passives either. Veil of Shadow is a large aura ability that is going to reduce offensive ability and total speed of enemies that are in the radius. Considering that the Nightblade class is usually melee, the odds are most enemies attacking you will be in your AoE. If we add the Knight's Chill Mastery to the ability, the aura is going to get some cold and frostburn damage as well as reducing enemy resistances for pierce, cold, and poison. Really high class AoE, sorry, really high class AoE uh, options that always just toggle on because it's a passive and you and you just click the button. Ooh, classy stuff from the edgiest class in the game. Phantasmal Armor is our next passive and really strong defensive option depending on your class. Your other class, I suppose. Uh, at first glance, this ability is going to actually give you energy absorbed from enemy abilities, 10% to be exact. So if you're running low on energy in your build, this is a nice way to start to offset some of your energy costs. You'll also get flat armor increases pierce resistance as well as reductions to freeze and petrify abilities and then cap it all off with a chance ugh, of retaliation damage that we don't see very often uh, energy leech retaliation is going to pull more energy from the enemies attacking you which will further help those energy stores if you're really really hurting for that a uh, really cool ability that might actually get overlooked on the night blade because most people don't think defensive ability when they see a melee assassin. Anatomy of Murder is the next uh, masteryless passive on our Nightblade arsenal, and we will definitely make for a good pairing with your Necromancer or Occultist classes. So, uh, Anatomy of Murder is going to buff your vitality, your bleeding, and your vitality decay stats, while giving you a huge percentage increase to your cunning, if you recall, uh, cutting being a very important stat for the uh, the Nightblade. Uh, cutting is going to increase a good chunk of damage by increasing your offensive ability, physical damage, and bleeding stats. Basically, cutting is the Nightblade stat that everyone really wants, but they usually end up taking physique because sometimes you just need to stay alive more. Who knows? Live your life. Be the cunning Nightblade Ninja that you really want to be. <sighs> this ability also lets you do a bigger percentage of damage to human-type enemies, uh, which isn't glamorous in any way, but, I mean, there's a lot of people-type bad guys in this game, so, you know what? Take what you can get. Our very last passive ability for the Nightblade is called Merciless Repertoire. This is an ability that I think works really well for retaliation builds, especially with the Oathkeeper class. Now, damage-wise, this ability is going to give us some flat poison damage while buffing poisoned, poisoned, poison, and acid. Wow, my brain is just putting words together today. Buffing poisoned acid, I did it again, poison acid, cold, and frost burn damage. The keynote of this ability, though, is the outright huge buff to all retaliation damage. At max rank, you can just about double your retaliation damage output. And if I were looking for a retaliation build with an acid focus for the Nightblade, I would actually look over to the Oathkeeper, built with the uh, Perdition set, which you can get pretty early on. 
and you will start to dump acid retaliation damage all over the entire planet. It is really, really, really good. And considering that the Oathkeeper class has a lot of passive abilities that will convert uh, its damage into acid as well, you can really see the synergy between the two classes. So, in my experience, the Nightblade class is absolutely beginner friendly while being endgame friendly, and you cannot ever go wrong with the stealthy melee assassins that unleash your inner edgelord that all of us really need. So, that is going to about do it for this video, everybody. Oh, thanks so much for hanging out. We will continue along the week as well. Again, this is going to be a five-video week, so I've got <coughs> to put a bunch of work in. Oh, fingers crossed we can get them all sounding good, edited, and delightful for your viewing consumption. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. We will continue down the path with the Arcanist, which is arguably my least favorite in the entire game. But hey, it's got its cool bits too so it's definitely not bad anyway peace out i'll see you there